Hello everyone, and welcome to that one playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. We find us in a time of mourning as we reflect on the deaths of Valentina, Bill, and Bob. But like all of the struggles before this, we must learn to pass on. We must learn to be stronger, smarter, and even more ambitious than before. We will now continue to take our space program far beyond where it has gone before. New plans, new directions. We honor our three fallen Conrads by continuing on the journey that they laid before us. And yes, welcome back. Here we are once again. Uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to do right away here to make sure that one, we don't go bankrupt, and two, we can actually gather enough science to continue to improve our vehicles considerably. As you can see, we've done just about everything in the research tree that takes uh, 90 science. There's one more in aviation here, subsonic flight. I didn't really need right now, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, but beyond that, we can't do the 160 science ones because we need to upgrade the R&D lab. Now, the R&D lab, unfortunately, is going to cost us $902,000 in order to upgrade. We will need to do this as soon as possible, we just don't have the cash to do it at this moment in time. So let's go over to the administration building. Now in here, we can actually activate one more program. Right now we have Boldly Go. So anytime we get uh, science from a new biome, we'll get 15,000 funds, which is actually not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep that going for the time being. What I am gonna do is activate Minmus probes because we're gonna to start to do a little bit of science around there. It's gonna give us two things. One, we'll be able to gather uh, some scientific data that we don't have yet from around Minmus, as well as get a whole bunch of cash influx from the milestones that we'll get around Minmus, as well as any new contracts that pop up. Okay, so we've got those two. That's the maximum we can do, but uh, it also gives us an advance of 75,000 in cash, which is very much needed. Since we last spoke though, or the last video, I did go ahead and do a couple of probe missions contracts that paid just a little bit of extra cash. So 19,000, not that one. Uh, sorry, these are available. Archives, the ones we've completed recently. New satellite in orbit, 78,000. New satellite in the orbit of the moon, 104,000. So I did a couple of easy little contracts just to make sure I had some extra cash on hand. While I am in here though, I am gonna look at uh, some of the other ones that are available. There is a satellite orbit of the moon, 120,000. I'll take that, cause that's some pretty much free cash. And then orbit of Kerbin, 68,000. We'll take that one too. There's nothing up front for those contracts, but uh, it's pretty easy to complete. We've got satellites that can already do it, or rather launch vehicles that can do it pretty easily. So should be pretty easy to collect money there. Now, with that all in mind, if I go ahead and look at my current build list, I do have a satellite. This is what I've been using to kind of do those easy contracts. It's one that you've already seen before. It's just a very easy, easy probe with a relay dish on it, so it could act as a relay. If I get too many of them in orbit and it starts to slow down the game because there's too many objects, we can just start to eventually delete those. I do, however, have two new vehicles in construction that we are going to try and launch today. The first one is the Val-1. This is the first piece of the Project Valentina endeavor, and Project Valentina is going to be the next big step in trying to put more Kerbals, not just into space, but make them go further. As the last vehicle and last mission from the previous episode showed, things are more challenging than we anticipated. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Val-1. The number one has a lot more meaning here than just, uh, obviously, it's the first of its kind. Uh, it is the first vehicle we've had that's going to go long distance with only one Kerbal. This pod up here at the top, this is a single Kerbal pod, uh, so we won't be having the adventurers go with a pilot, scientist, and engineer. We're just gonna send, uh, really probably the first couple missions, a pilot, maybe, maybe a scientist or engineer. I have made this autonomous because, as you can see down in the bottom right corner, there is no Kerbal attached to this vehicle right now. Nobody is riding inside. This is purely a test vehicle, but, but I have included quite a few science modules within this as well. So inside this little uh, cargo hatch, we've got some stuff in there that we're going to be testing, not just for science purposes, uh, but there's a bunch of those life support containers that we're going to make sure don't fail. So that way, at least we'll have further generations of them. They'll be more likely to stay intact and working properly when we actually put Kerbals on board these things. So without further ado, we're gonna get this baby started up here. 
for our first uh, test flight of the Val 1. And so far looking pretty good. Okay, there we go. I was having some issues with the sound for a second. This thing's a little bit wobbly, but I think uh, I think it should be okay. I'm kind of probably maybe starting the gravity turn a little early, and I probably should have put fins on this as well because of how much it teeters, and it would keep it a little bit more a little bit more in line with the uh, current trajectory. I'm probably tilting a little too quick. We're going to try and keep it oriented here as best as possible. It does have a lot of gimbal control, so it has those smaller control engines on the side boosters that are connected uh, along with those Kodiaks, and then there are a few of the uh, swivels on the main segment in the middle, which is going to give that core stage a lot of control as well. Yeah, I should have had this going vertically a lot longer before I started that gravity turn. I'm kind of fighting it a little bit, as you can see by all of the oscillation on the top half of the rocket, but I think I think we'll be okay. I don't really care if this thing ends up in a perfectly equatorial orbit. We're going to try and get it as close as possible, but uh, no promises, no promises. If it gets to where it's meant to go, that's a, that's a good accomplishment. Now, the goal here, as I said, we, uh, we just accepted Minmus probes, meaning that uh, we do have to eventually land probes on Minmus. The goal of this, at least as a test flight for this vehicle before we're going to prove it for kerbaled flight, for actual uh, putting, putting crew aboard, is this thing is going to attempt to do a flyby of Minmus, which is going to allow us to collect science from Minmus, test the longevity of the vehicle, and then this will actually, once it's crewed, probably be a vehicle that I take to the moon first to try and do that orbital mission. Okay, so there goes the top half of this thing. Now, this should have enough thrust, I believe, um, but I, I also want to make sure we bring the thrust limiters up on all these engines. Hopefully it doesn't throw us too off balance. Doing that, that looked pretty good. Good, nice and controlled. Yeah, now we can kind of fly this right at our prograde marker, we should be okay. Yeah, not the, not the sexiest looking rocket in the world, it is very bland, but uh, once we, oh, what is this? Oh, my other vehicle is complete. Thank you for popping up in my face while I'm trying to do important business here, game. Okay, second uh, stage, well, I, I guess this is kind of stage 2.5. We've got two of the sphinxes, I believe these are. Uh, nope, these are swivels also. Are they really swivels? I did use swivels. I thought he's Maybe the sphinxes are in the uh, next portion here. I don't remember. It's been a couple of days since I think I actually built this thing. But uh, this should have plenty of thrust. Let's see. Time until apoapsis at the top, middle left. Yeah, that time frame is going up. So I'm going to go ahead and take this a little bit more horizontal. And then uh, when our apoapsis height reaches about 150 kilometers very shortly here, I'm going to kill the engines, bada bing bada boom, and this is probably where, yeah, we're going to go ahead and put our maneuver in here, and this should be all pretty straightforward by this point, you've seen me do it a few times, uh, we're going to make sure we get into a relatively circular orbit so that we don't waste too much fuel, the game is going to freeze while it auto saves like it likes to do so much. I appreciate the auto saves. The fact that it freezes, I think, has to do with the fact that there's 800 mods. And there it goes. Okay, back to back to normal. Let's go ahead and line this up. Now, this does have uh, a decent amount of control in terms of uh, reaction wheels. That's the word I'm looking for. So I don't have to but uh, activate RCS, but I do have RCS because I want to test out, uh, pretend, or at least kind of pretend like we're testing out some of these RCS thrusters. Plus these are, uh, well, I guess they're generation eight, so I have used them before, but I wanna get using them just so they become less of a failure rate as time goes by in the future here too. All right, so we've got a relatively long burn here to get into orbit. It's gonna take us about a minute 43. It will take more than this stage has, I believe, which is okay. This has, I, I think I did the numbers right. That's part of the reason why this is a test too, is just to see if it's got the Delta V to, to do this big of a project that I'm hoping it can do. One, again, we're going to try and uh, swing by Minmus. If we can get in orbit of Minmus, we'll do that because it's easier to get into orbit of Minmus than it is the moon. And then hopefully return it also so we can test out the heat shield that's attached to this because testing out heat shields and the survivability of vehicles is obviously something we have a uh, slightly questionable history of. 
So this stage is going to burn out momentarily. Got about 100 Delta V left there. And then we'll have about 400 left on the entire node here. So we'll stage. And this is where that bigger vacuum engine exists. Uh, yeah, this is the Sphinx engine. So it's a little more efficient, uh, but obviously does not have nearly as much thrust as those swivels. But now that our vehicle is a lot lighter, it, uh, it makes more sense to use this as a transfer engine to move between orbit of Kerbin and wherever we go to next. Okay, so that puts us barely in orbit. And we have a little over 1600 Delta V. And that's going to be almost enough to send us on a trajectory to get to Minmus. There should be enough Delta V in the next stage, however, that uh, everything should be A-OK. -okay, because we got 3,500 in total. Let's go ahead and open up our little cargo bay here. And I'm going to rotate this so that uh, we get some sunlight in here as well. Let's see. Oh, and I think I just lost probe control. So let's make sure we extend an antenna so our satellites can start helping us out here as well. All right, so now let's take a look in here. Obviously, we got some base science. I don't think we need any more of this, so I'm not too worried about those. There are two mystery goos in here, which we're gonna wanna do a high orbit, low orbit, or high pass by, low pass by of Minmus, if possible, so we'll have each one of those. We'll transmit those back. We've got pressure, we've got temperature, we won't be able to do a crew report because there's actually no crew on board. And the actual probe control, that's in here as well inside this little storage container. I have put quite a few little uh, antenna on here. Uh, and that's mostly because I want to make sure with the distances we're hoping get to get to, uh, the range from Kerbin will be okay. We have plenty of relay satellites, so I'm, I'm thinking we should be okay. What is that? There's an object. The Omas Debris is flying within about, it's, is it gonna come within 20 kilometers? That is fascinating. That's kind of scary and dangerous when you think about it, but luckily, uh, luckily things colliding in Kerbal Space Program in space doesn't happen like ever, really. Okay, I just burned about an extra second or so because I wanted to get my periapsis height to above 85 kilometers it felt just felt like a better number to me in my head i don't know why all right and then the goal is minmus now minmus is on this uh this much more uh, uh, aggressive uh, plane in terms of trying to get to it so the goal usually that i try to do if i'm on an equatorial orbit i'm going to try and go where its orbit crosses the equator of kerbin is the most efficient thing to do uh, unfortunately we're not timing wise in a great spot right now so what I'm going to do is aim for this, but we might have to wait a little bit of time until it actually, you know, becomes an applicable thing. Okay, so if I send out our trajectory way out to there, 19 days. We're going to have to rethink maybe some of the life support. It would take a lot less time if I had this either on the same plane as Minmus, and I could hit it a lot earlier. But I like this Delta V number, 1560. That'd be really ideal because otherwise we're going to have to spend a lot more Delta V to try and do a plane change. So let's do this. I'm going to wait a little while until Minmus moves further in its orbit. Uh, for the time being, we are going to launch this bad boy. This is the Wanderer. Now, before we get too carried away with what's inside of this magical sphere of awesomeness, we're going to go ahead and launch it. This has got a little bit of a Soyuz launch design to some extent. It's got a thinner uh, middle stage or primary stage in the middle there. Uh, and then the boosters on the side, and then it gets thicker at the top sort of thing. I thought it, I thought it had a cooler, cooler look to it. But yeah, this should be fairly easy to get off the ground. Uh, pretty easy to fly, I imagine, too. Um, unfortunately, it is now actually deciding to take a severe turn, because I think the device inside is on its side, and therefore it is not flying it in a uh, very good trajectory, as you can see. Yeah, that's a lot of blowing up. That's a lot of debris and whatnot. And yep, that, that one's still going. Oh, no, it blew up. Hmm. Back to the drawing board, as they say. Okay, while we're waiting for the Wanderer 2 to be built, I guess, uh, I think I'm ready to go ahead and make this trajectory happen toward Midmus with Deval 1. And we have time warped to the appropriate time to commence this burn. Luckily, fantastically, 
we get to do it on the uh, light side of uh, the planet too so we get to see exactly what we're doing so this is uh, a little more than 1500 meters per second on the burn I don't feel like I'm quite lined up with that trajectory let's straighten out just a smidge and we should have enough in this stage to do this However, I'm glancing at both the requirement number near the bottom right and my Kerbal Engineer readout, 1300 there, 13. it's going to be close. We might have to use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the next stage, which is not a problem. There's plenty in the next stage. I believe there is uh, well over 2,000, not well over, but like 2,000-ish Delta V on the next stage, which, which means I'm pretty confident this vehicle will get into the orbit of Minmus. Uh, we will be able to do some low flybys, gather some science in orbit, and then return pretty easily to Kerbin. There is, now don't quote me on this, there is a very small chance if Delta V margins end up being healthy, we could do something crazy like attempt to land this thing on Minmus. Because Minmus, even though in uh, Janus Q it is bigger than normal Minmus in the base game, still has a pretty low gravity. Like, gravity is the same on... Kerbin as it is in vanilla. It's just a bigger Kerbin, so it takes more velocity to get her. I don't know. There's some physics nonsense, but for the most part, Minmus should have about the same gravity. Should be just as easy to kind of land on it. Maybe a small, small, small tidbit more than vanilla. I'm not going to touch the controls at all on this because I don't want to waste fuel kind of with the gimbling of the engine because that can happen. This is this is still looking really, really close. 300. Yeah, it's. It, I think I'm going to... I think I'm gonna barely have to burn with the next stage, which is which is okay. I am gonna watch this as it goes though, because it's gonna get some pretty small margins at the end here. Oh, oh, we actually went too far. We went too far. We did have enough delta V. Look at that. Okay, well we're gonna have to turn the vehicle around. And I think the game is auto-saving again. Yes, yes, yes. Long, long auto-saves. Too many mods installed. Blah 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 blah. Got it. And we're just going to do a really light burn, bring that back in nice and close, nice and close. How about there? Let's go ahead and focus view on our target. Yeah, okay. So, well, we're going to have a very, a very polar approach here. Oh, that was too far. And this says we have 66 meters per second on this stage. So, that's a good sign. That means we might be able to do some, some reorienting of our trajectory with this stage. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's Eve. Oh, there's Drez. Moho, Lindor. Look at this. Look at all these little planets just popping out in the distance. That's so beautiful. Okay, anyways, back to the mission at hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good sign. This is a good sign. We have more Delta V than I thought. I must have been looking at the wrong numbers. Who knows? Okay, I'm going to add a maneuver once we get past the moon's orbit, so that way I don't accidentally re... You know, adjust this to a point where we hit the moon and that really jacks us up going to mid miss, but yeah, this should work. So let's go a little bit on the downy downy. We get closer to the orbit of Minmus itself. And then I don't know if I need to go more yeah, that way. There we go. Nice. Ooh, Minmus looks very pretty in this uh in parallax and Janus Q version. Oh, that's too far. 71 kilometers. Let's see if we can get a little closer. 49. That puts us at 7. 7 kilometers. I like it. I want to get nice and low just like that so we can get some nice pretty views of it. 4.7 meters per second. I might not even burn the engines. I might just use like the RCS we have on this thing. We do still have more than two days until we approach that uh, maneuver node. So for the time being, once again... We are back with the second iteration of the Wanderer. Now, the problem with the first one was there's a probe core in the middle of this here uh, fairing that is pointed somewhat sideways, or at least sideways relative to the way rockets fly. And thus, when I hit the go rocket button, it made it fly sideways more and more and more and more until it was then pointing upside down. And as some of you well may know, rockets do not do very well flying upside down. So to nip that problem in the butt, I've added another probe core on top of this thing that's pointed in the upward direction, so we shouldn't have as much of an issue here. So here's to try this for a second time. I'm also realizing just now that uh, I don't actually have a Kerbal Engineer readout device on this. So I don't exactly know where the upsies and the downsies, height and velocities thingsies are. 
Not that it means it's a bad thing, it just, uh, this, this rocket contains a special probe that will have to do some very soft landing when it gets to its target, and as such, that might be a little more difficult to do. I should probably start turning this over just ever so slightly, not too much though. Don't have the greatest uh, prograde control marker like we, we would have if we had a pilot, because our pilot, well, the one pilot that's currently alive in level 1 is Jed. He can do prograde and retrograde markers, my probes cannot do that, which, uh, when we get some better probes, better probe cores, rather, uh, we'll be able to do that sort of thing. So at, at the moment, our goal with this uh, vehicle is to get it to an equatorial orbit around Kerbin. It will be going toward the moon, because uh, I've picked up a contract to actually do some seismic readouts on the surface of the moon. Should be a pretty substantial financial contract, which will help us out. Uh, the science of doing seismic data on the moon, I don't think we, we may or may not need it for the biomes involved, at least that the target of the contract is on, but there are three or four sites for it that I think I have to get to. And rather than doing a vehicle that's going to land and hop and try to fly again, I decided to build a little rover, as we were testing out uh, previously before in a different episode. So I'm going to check the map here just to see what my overall height is, and uh, yeah, we're actually doing pretty good on height, so I need to probably start getting this gravity turn, doing some more aggressive movements here, because I don't want to go up as much as I want to go sideways, so that I can uh, have enough velocity to get to orbit. Now, I did add some, some, uh, what are those thingy thingies called, uh, that help the boosters go away from the rocket. I'm gonna call them that for now, the away from the rocket boosters, because my brain is not working, and I don't know what the word is. So as soon as I stage here, we should get a cool little, like, uh, makeshift sort of Korolov cross type thing going here. Let's see if it works. Ah, look at that. Perfect. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, and they all ran into each other. Okay, so it wasn't that be Okay, not as cool as maybe your real-life Korolev cross. That, that'll give you, but it started out pretty cool for a short bit. No, now I'm actually kind of confused on whether or not this one single engine here... Again, a I chose a swivel. I know I did that for the gimbal, but... A swivel does not have a lot of thrust for the size of this thing in front of me. And I'm actually starting to get a little worried. Okay, time to apoapsis is going up. That's good. But I'm just gonna... Oh, 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 oh. Pressing the wrong control buttons. Didn't have my fingers on WASD. I had them on, like, Q something, something, something. Okay, we're gonna keep this going up a little bit. Just because I want to make sure that we get high enough and fast enough. So this thing doesn't start plummeting back down to Kerbin, that would be bad. What we can probably do is ditch the fairing, because we are definitely high enough, and we'll get the first kind of glimpse of what's going on in here. Now, uh, I want to make sure that my main antenna is extended. So here's the probe I had to add in order to make sure this thing flew straight. The rest of it down here is the actual rover. Now, it's hard to see because we're not looking directly at it, uh, but there's a rover, and then there's a whole system up here that kind of is going to act with these engines as a sky crane mechanism to help it land. Oh, that stage is done. Okay, stage, please. Stage, stage, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, let's go ahead and burn this guy. This should be a yeah, much more powerful... I don't know if it's a more powerful engine, but it's at least more efficient, and it's carrying less weight, so it should do pretty good. Um, let's get this... Uh, our, ma our primary speed here to about three kilometers per second, then I'll shut it down, we'll make a maneuver node to get this thing into orbit. Okay, and as you can probably see here as well, uh, this has a lot of delta V. It's got, uh, in this stage over here, if we look at the very far left bottom, 4,071 meters per second. This, uh, this burn to get us into orbit is only going to take about uh, 870 and then we'll have plenty to get to the moon. And then really this last portion here with the sky crane piece, that, that really only has to operate once we're in orbit of the moon to slow us down to, to land. And it's got, I think it's got, let's see, 1,000, which should be plenty. So all in all, I think this thing should be fairly comfortable and then some, uh, but I have been wrong and failed in the past. Oh, I, I, passed, I passed the burn point. I gotta start burning. Always seem to do that, not paying attention. All right, and that should be right there, comfortable. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty circular orbit too. Not, not too shabby for doing it blind, relatively speaking. Okay, and then since we're pretty much equatorial, we should have no trouble uh, just setting up a maneuver to send this to the moon. And then as it's on its way, we'll be able to do the change of plane 
that we have to do on the Val 1 rocket. All right, we've just somehow lined this up to get a 15 kilometer moon periapsis, which is pretty good if we end up burning right on this node. The vehicle doesn't have a lot of control, makes it a little annoying to try and turn, but that's not its main purpose. So as long as it can get there, I don't care. All right, so this is actually, a, a, seems like a pretty low burn in terms of getting lined up with the moon. Uh, 1,494 delta V, that's gotta be the lowest trajectory I think I've ever calculated so far, which is good. And a simple fast forward time warp to where we gotta begin the burn and go. We are sending this little guy on his way to the moon. I'm not paying much attention to the lighting effects. Look at how it's flickering on the back of the rocket there. I love it, it's so pretty. Okay, uh, I think I kind of maybe missed a little bit. Yes, in a typical Kyle fashion, we have gone too far. Okay, and then we'll do just a very subtle, small burn to bring this back down to where it needs to go. So I know we were saying, wow, look at uh, how small of a little delta V it's going to take me to get there. Well, it took more because I did the wrong thing again. Oh, that's pretty close. Yeah, we're actually a little slightly too low. We're gonna run into the planet, or not the planet, the moon. It's not a planet, it's a moon. That's pretty dang close, 23 kilometers. I'm happy with that. Okay, and then we can kind of see, yeah, right here, this is, this is where we gotta do those seismic tests. So we're on a little bit of an inclined orbit and that's okay because it means we're guaranteed to kind of, we, we should eventually be at a point where we'll pass by close to that. If we were on the equator, we wouldn't be in a bad spot either because I guess we're pretty close, but if we're equatorial, uh, we'd have to make a little bit of adjustment since we're inclined. There's a chance we just have to wait a couple of orbits and then we'll eventually get to a point where we can land there close to there fairly comfortably. And then because we're a rover, we can just drive there. All right, and we'll just set an alarm for sphere of influence change. Uh, time until five days, go ahead and add that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna switch on over to the Val 1 itself. All right, so I was in the middle of fast forwarding to when this had to do its uh, sphere, of, or not sphere of influence, it's, uh, its plane change, inclination change, and uh, our main hatch failed. So it's a good thing we're testing this. It had a short circuit. I have no idea what the heck that means. It just says, has suffered a short circuit. I mean, it still has, it still has control. There's wheel authority. I wonder if this was my only point of control, I would have an issue. Like maybe the pilot wouldn't be able to control it. Something would happen. Oh, actually, there's no there's no electric charge in it. That's pretty bad. Luckily, we have, I think I have one extra battery in here, right there. So yeah, there's still power. We're still we're still okay there. We have solar panels that have kind of scattered around the outside of this. So that's not an issue. But apparently, yeah, I think that's what it is. It no longer can hold an electric charge. Nonetheless, that's why we're testing this, and uh, luckily we have some backup power. So everything is a okay. It's why we test these things. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half. I fast forward until we have to make this actual maneuver. Um, I'm gonna focus on Minmus. Where'd it go? There it is. And what I'm actually going to do to try and get this adjustment, because it is only 4.7 meters per second, uh, I think I'm gonna try and do this with RCS. So we're gonna let the vehicle kind of mellow out here and straighten out. I'm gonna fast forward right until the burn point, even though, you know, this small of a burn this far out, we, we probably don't have to time it perfectly. I'm gonna turn on RCS, and then I'm very just subtly going to press the RCS in the forward direction. And yeah, so that's burning us forward, but how much RCS is it burning? Not too much, actually. So I'm gonna do this because if I use the engine, it's gonna, it's gonna do four meters per second, like instantaneously, and I might just fly past it. It's gonna be hard to get it really finite on that last point. So I'm glad we have some RCS thrusters on this. Ends up becoming very useful. We'll get it right on in there. And then now we can just do little, little taps, little taps. Oh, yeah, not even, not even perfectly accurate to where we necessarily were. I'm gonna see if I back it up just a smidge too. Right there, six kilometers, let's go a little, 10, perfect. I like 10, 10's a good, a good round number, 10 kilometers above Minmus. That is our new trajectory. We can then set an alarm now for this one. It's also going to be 
a sphere of influence change we'll add that 13 days away and now we can go play around with our other vehicle that's headed to the moon we're gonna go ahead and just warp along with the wanderer now as it makes its way toward the moon as soon as we get to that sphere of influence the time warp will slow down once again so we'll speed it up as we get close to the moon uh, again so we can do that close flyby and get that uh, that burn going to where we're gonna enter into a complete orbit there we go there's the sphere of influence and we are approaching fast like a bat out of hell that is for sure let's go ahead change our focus to the moon real fast so that we can set up this maneuver mode 379 delta V to do this orbital maneuver and naturally as I do so often I went right past it so let's just just do this quick Kyle come on come on get it in, in the right spot fire the engines doesn't have to be pretty thrust limiter up please thank you very much shouldn't take long to do this I don't think actually uh, yeah we're still yeah we're, we're well past the burn point so just burn just burn retrograde for the most part does it doesn't have to be pretty at this point I'm, I'm beyond the point of looking pretty 46 by well 46 by crashing into the surface so that's not good so um actually this should be pretty easy if i burn from where i'm at if i burn toward burn toward the surface yes if i burn toward the surface i should be able to shift this over this is not the most efficient way to do things i'm gonna bring the engine up a little bit so i got some control and what this should do is bring this down lower and that higher yeah just like that just like it's doing so that's at uh, 12, that's at 32. Actually, that's good there. 28 by 17, perfect. Now we're in a comfortable orbit. Now we won't come crashing down. Okay, and then as I said, this is in an incline orbit uh, and we need to land down here. So rather than changing the actual orbit of our vehicle and wasting a bunch of fuel, because I have 1200 and that, that I might be able to land with that to be honest. I don't want to land with this giant engine. So what we're going to do is, uh, actually, now that I think about it, I need to check on here. I know I had, I need to make sure this solar panel is extended. Did I, did I have, yeah, luckily I've got little solar panels sitting on the actual probe, the actual rover. Otherwise, this whole mission could have failed because I didn't extend the actual main one. I'm a smart guy, people. I'm a smart guy. Just making sure we got electricity. Okay, let's go ahead and speed up time here. Uh, as far as our other mission, we have eight days until the Val 1 gets to Minmus. So we got plenty of time to let the moon kind of orbit Kerbin. And as the moon itself rotates, this location we're trying to land, you can see it's very slowly moving because, again, the moon is tidally locked to Kerbin. So it does one rotation on its axis for every orbit around Kerbin it does. So it's going to take some time for this to happen. You know what, I've actually decided against this. I'm already past it, that's one thing. But on the same side, because I'm gonna try and land on the dark side of the moon, uh, you know, Pink Floyd style, I feel like it could be bad, because I can't see the ground and I don't have a Kerbal Engineer readout device on this, so I won't know where the ground is unless I can see it. So I might be better off waiting for the moon to continue in its out orbit until we reach a point where said landing spot is actually in the daylight. And in doing that, I'm going to reach the point where we're going to enter the Sphere of Influence for the Val 1. Okay, so we are going to enter the Sphere of Influence here momentarily. This says, uh, this says eight days. That can't be right, there we go. Why did it say eight days? No, eight hours maybe. Okay, well it says it's gonna happen in eight hours, 30 minutes, even though we have technically already entered the sphere of influence because, 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 because. Where, where is Minmus? Where is it at? Where'd you go? There it is. Oh, our command pod has suffered a reaction wheel failure now too. Well, that's kind of problematic a little bit for control, but uh, at least we have monoprop, so that's that's a good thing. We did enter a sphere of influence and there was a message and I think I might have accidentally deleted it, but I'm assuming we got some cash for that? Yeah, because we're at 343,000 now and we were under 200 before, and we might have even gotten one or two science for it, I think. So yeah, this is what I mean. Boatload of cash just for driving past Minmus. And this is a pretty, 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 uh, it's a pretty, pretty Minmus. As I say, it's a fairly pretty Minmus. It's a very pretty Minmus. I like it. This is a different Minmus. 
Yeah, and it's only going to take us 275 delta V to circularize our orbit. So it'll burn up the very small amount that's left in our current stage. And then uh, we'll use the next stage. But what I think I might do instead of that is I think I should have a small amount of reaction control surface, or not reaction control surface, but reaction control wheel authority via our little, uh, our little probe core in here. And what I want to try to do is, let's see, I need to pick the right direction here. Because of the delta V I have still on here, there's, there's not a ton, uh, but I, I don't want this to go flying off into space somewhere and get lost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very subtly burn toward Minmus in terms of making our, our orbit trajectory as it currently stands crash into Minmus. Because as I said, the next stage on this vehicle has plenty of delta V. So if I just kind of line this up right here, we'll see it here. I'll, I'll very subtly turn on the thrust. And then just like that, you can see we're going to technically crash into the edge of Minmus. And then I'll, I'll turn the reaction wheels back on to flip it around because it'll be a little faster that way. And then we're going to line up with the other side here. I'll turn off the uh, the thrusters there so I have a little bit of monoprop kind of left just in case. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to release our next stage. Now the reason I flipped it around to do so is because the staging is going to apply some force. It's going to ditch that piece now even closer to Minmus. And we might have actually, yeah, we got a slight boost away, but we're still going to crash into it there. So then what we'll do is uh, is we'll just barely, barely bring up our thrust, fire that next engine, and uh, yeah, look at that, four kilometers. We can go a tiny bit further. Let's get it up to, let's get it up to eight. Eight sounds good. Maybe, maybe 10. There we go, 10.5 kilometers. And then we end up ditching that other piece. And as it flies away, we can say goodbye, knowing that it will not be a piece of debris and trash floating through space. Then we'll go ahead and create that maneuver node that we were going to do originally and time warp in for this. And as we approach Minmus, we'll get a nice pretty view of all the colors, the greens and grays. Slow it down just a bit. Actually, since before we get too close and since uh, I did come here for other reasons besides just testing vehicles, let's uh, let's do some science. So let's observe this mystery goo. Uh, I'm not going to be able to retrieve this science because I have no way to get it into the command pod so we're gonna have to just transmit all of this so I'll go ahead and do that and hopefully uh ooh, okay it did transmit I was gonna say electric charge may or may not be an issue I gotta turn the vehicle I think uh yes because at the moment as it stands our solar panels are not catching the sunlight there we go that should be a good spot to collect uh collect some photons and I believe we are high above. I wasn't actually paying attention. This one says atmospheric pressure scan while in, yes, space high over minimus. The instrument reads zero as if it were in a vacuum. That's very much the same reading we get everywhere we take this thing. I'm going to speed up time just to just to get enough electrical charge. Oh, that's right. I'm capped at 200. I, it says it should be 510, but it's actually because my main thing doesn't have, a, have any electrical capacity. Okay, hopefully we're able to transmit a lot of this. I kind of kind of going off of barely anything at the moment but we got that so that's 24 and then let's do the uh, thermometer and that's the same scientific little stuff we got last time too nothing really new and creative I guess awesome so a good chunk of science not that we're really gonna be able to do anything with it until we upgrade the R&D building but again now we have 413,000 cash because yes we've collected science data from Minmus uh, and then we got the bonus because of the current administration project that we have going. I believe that's all the science I had. I can't do, I yeah, can't do a crew report, obviously. Okay, so we'll continue speeding up time until we get to our maneuver node only a few minutes away. And this looks like it'll be a nice short burn to, uh, I should hopefully have enough. Yeah, with the smaller vehicle, we ditched that bigger piece. We got a lot more control now. So let's go ahead and just burn this. Oh yeah, this thing's got a ton of control. Too much control, in fact. The gimbal on this engine is aggressive. Okay, and I think we should be in low orbit now, so we'll do another round of science. We get another milestone? Yes, we did. We entered orbit, which was, holy crap, that's like, yeah, that's 250,000 additional. And one of our life support tanks has a water leak, but again, that's why we're testing these things, so that when we actually bring a Kerbal, hopefully they work properly again. 
All right, so all in all, we have a total of 207 science. So we would be able to do one of those 160 nodes. We just need to actually upgrade the R&D building, which we can't afford yet, even with more than half a million funds. Hopefully, once this thing returns from Minmus, we'll get some cash as well. Now, the real fun question is, there is 1,600 Delta V on this. What are the odds that we could get this to land? Currently, orbital velocity is 237 meters per second. It's not that hard to land on Minmus with just random vehicles in vanilla, and considering the gravity should be the same, my thought process, at least, is that even with no landing legs or anything, as long as we find a, you know, a spot that's not mountainous like this, like one of the flatter regions, we might be able to pull this off. I think it's worth a shot. This is totally not within the normal parameters of this mission, but when is anything I do? Yeah, so 241 meters per second. So let's say, let's say it takes double that to land, double it to get to orbit. You're looking at a thousand. It didn't take that much to circularize this orbit so i'm thinking i'm thinking there's we're well within the parameters to do this uh, someone is probably currently screaming at their their tv screen but that's okay person screaming at your tv screen you get to just enjoy slash have anxiety about this adventure too kyle just do the things you came to do never there's no one on board this so what do we have to lose except the potential for a lot more cash oh we're on a suborbital trajectory that's worth a milestone too Oh, that was worth it in and of itself. Look at that. I bet if we land, we'd, we'd probably have enough to upgrade the R&D building. Who wants to place your bets on whether or not that's going to be the case? Oh, and this does have Kerbal Engineer as opposed to my other vehicle going to the moon that was actually designed to land. Funny how that works. The thing designed to land has nothing to help it land. The thing not designed to land has enough scientific modules to, you know, land. Okay, so here's the goal. The goal is going to be to attempt this landing and then pretty much as soon as we tap the ground, we're just, we're just gonna leave. We're just gonna like touch the ground and go bye-bye. Right, we are altitude 1300 meters. Oh gosh, it's, it is flatter up here, which makes me feel a little bit better. As long as we can see Kerbin, we should have control too. I'm gonna start firing the engines because I feel like the ground is coming at me fairly quick. Yes, probably a good idea to prepare. Okay, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. I can see some rocks coming up. That's good, that's good. Let's go ahead and just lightly burn the engine. Lightly burn, lightly burn. Or, no, or, or maybe a little a little more aggressive, a little more aggressive. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, looking at the Delta V total, we're, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be A-OK. -okay. okay, we're gonna try and kill a lot of the lateral velocity here. Go, and then get this up to like this. Bring the thrust down just a smidge. Oh, I think I'm going up. I don't wanna go up. Start falling again, please. 40 kilometers. I put the surface on here. Oh, 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 we're going up again. That was not that was not what we wanted. I panicked. I panicked a little bit there. Okay, okay. Okay, coming back down. Coming back down. Is anyone else uh, blood pressure doing weird stuff right now? Nope, 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 nope. Oh, we're going to fall. We're going to fall. Oh, jeez. Okay, well that was it was not entirely part of the plan, and I think it's auto-saving again. Otherwise, maybe we weigh a million pounds since we hit the ground, because it's not budging or moving. Oh, there it goes. It came back to life. And popping back down. Okay, well, you know, we're on the ground, and we've made a ton of cash because of it, so I don't really care. Yeah, 871,000. Now, if we return it, we'd have a lot more money. Now, here's kind of the problem... I don't think I'm going to be able to use the RCS to get off the ground. So for the time being, we might be a little bit stuck. Luckily, there's no Kerbal that's actually trapped here. We do have 1300 Delta V. There's plenty of Delta V to do some magic here, that's for sure. Can I do more science? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we can do the science. That's a thing that can happen. Look at that sexy, sexy science. 259 science. Reward for strategy. Boldly go. 15,000 because it's a new biome. Holler! All right, I'm sorry. I, I promise I'll never say holler on this channel ever again. And then we'll log some temperature data. Might not have enough power. I didn't pay attention. No, nope, no, it's done. It's good. Well, I know it wasn't exactly what we planned for the day. We were meant to land on the moon and actually just do more or less a flyby of Minmus, and we've done pretty much the exact opposite. 
I'm not gonna go ahead and say that this thing is stuck here, but we'll have to wait until next time to find out what happens to the Val 1. And until then, I'm Kyle, this has been That One Playthrough of Kerbal Space Program, and I hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day.